Hello, students. So this is Dr. Toke. Um, I'm going to make a series of videos for Lab 8 to kind of lead you through the activity um, in addition to the instructions that I provided in the Word document for uh, this last lab of GEOG 3600. So uh, I pulled up the document here, and basically this is a remote sensing introduction and introduction to raster lab. And it, allow, it, it requires you to do your own downloading of the data, prepare that data, and analyze those data sets in a, numbers, a number of ways. And so you're going to acquire two different data sets, a digital elevation model data set from the Utah Geographic Referencing Center, and two Landsat data sets from different times uh, in the early summer from 2022 and 2023 to try to compare green space um, in the desert regions of the Colorado Plateau following very different water years. So in 2022, it was exceptionally dry, and in 2023, it was exceptionally wet. And we want to see if there's any difference in desert greenness after the fact. OK, so I've given you links to download these things here. I've got it up in this uh, folder right here. So uh, this link, first one, is taking you to the UGRC area to download elevation and terrain data. So let's click on that. OK, and so uh, there's a number of ways to download the data. This page will link you to specific LIDAR data sets. Uh, but what I like to do is to uh, go to their raster app. And you can get a shortcut by clicking on raster app 10 meter data, which is what I asked you for here. So I'm going to do that now. Um, but I want to show you, see there's a yellow box around this. That means we're looking for 10 meter data, or that's where it exists across the entire state. Uh, but if you wanted to look for other products, anytime you're in their raster discovery data set, uh, you can go up one step to step one. And you could say, I want to search for more than 10 meter data. And then you have other options, right? So I was actually not really wanting to do that. But if you wanted to search for LIDAR, aerial photographs, contour maps, uh, and other things, they are here. But we want that 10 meter data set. So I'm going to click on that again. Now I need to define an area of interest. And I show you where that is here in terms of latitude and longitude. Unfortunately, this map doesn't allow you to do latitude and longitude, but I give you a description too. So basically, I want you to get data where the I-70 crosses the San Rafael Swell. So this uh, road here is the I-70, and the San Rafael Swell is here in the Colorado Plateau. I can see the uplift here, so I think it's right there. I'm going to zoom in. Yeah, and so this feature right here, this is the San Rafael Swell, and here's the I-70. So that's where I want. So uh, to basically download this data, what you do is you, I usually just do this kind of free draw polygon freehand. And I just, well, I'm interested in that area, but really you're going to download a whole tile. So I'm going to click that. And I wanted 10 meter data, so I'll drop this down, drop this down again, and I'll click download. And then you can see the area of the tile that I'll get is this big one right here, and it says north 39, west 111. Um, that's interesting. That's not actually what I wanted. <laughs> uh, so I wanted you to get uh, 112. So I think that is just north of here. You would probably okay, be OK getting this one. In fact, I might end up getting both of these here. So I'm going to go back to define area of interest, and I'm going to make it like this, and I'm going to click there again, and click download, and now I see I have two tiles. If I click this one, um, interesting. So 39, 111, and 112. So. Um, That is not quite the same. Let's check something out. Maybe I made a mistake and I wanted 30 meter. So let's see if I click the 30 meter and click download, selected tiles, no. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to the 10 meter. 
and the selected tiles is the um, 111 and 39. So we'll get that one because that's what I said. So let's go ahead and save that link as. So right click on the zip file here, say save link as, and put it into the folder where you want this to go. So for me, I've got a folder for my class that I'm working in. So I'm going to navigate into there and find that lab, lab eight, and I will say this is my DEM, and I'll just save that zipped file there. So note that every data set that you're going to download for GIS is almost always going to be in a zip format. Why is that? Well, um, GIS files are composed of multiple uh, file sets right for coordinate systems drawing shapes and uh, grid cells um, pyramids etc so uh, there's multiple files so you have to zip them up so you only have to download one thing so let's right click on it and extract it here in this folder so i'll just click extract all and i'm going to do that to that very folder so it should appear it should appear here it came in another folder and in this case, there's only two files. So it's the world file and the image. So I should be good with that. Um, but I guess I'm going to go ahead and download the other one too. So you can also do that by right clicking or clicking on the tile and then right clicking and say save as. And oh, that didn't work. Uh, save link as. There we go. It is the zip file. And that should now appear here. Refresh if it's not. So almost there. My internet's slow, I guess. OK, here it is. So I've already unzipped the 39. So now I'm going to extract this one. Extract here. Oh, so in that case, by extracting here, it stayed within the folder. If I wanted to put it in its own folder, I can kind of make the similar folder here. So north 40 west 111 underscore 10 meters. And then I can move these files there. And they should be good. Um, and there we see three files. There's even a metadata file. Interesting, it's not showing up in the other one. OK, so I don't need the zip packages probably, so you can go ahead and delete those if you feel confident. It's usually a good idea to open up, make sure it's unzipped fully without corrupting uh, before doing this. But I'm going to, since I know where to get it again, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that to not accumulate space. OK, so I've got those two data sets. Um, and those we will be able to click on the TIFF and open it up in our GIS Pro or any other GIS software. So that's great. Uh, that's the DEM that you need to get. So I go, I will go ahead and change this to North 39 West 111. OK, so now we want to go and get Landsat data for this uh, same area. And we want to get it from June of 2022 and 2023. And the point of that is, um, you know, here the snow runoff or spring runoff is usually happening in May. And so this altitude here is pretty high, actually. And we want the snow dev runoff and we want to start to see like the early summer growing season in the data. OK, so to link back to that, we're going to go to uh, Earth Explorer. And if you haven't already got an account with what's called Eros, then you need to make it. Uh, so click on that link and sign up. I recommend doing this right away, maybe the first thing, because uh, sometimes it takes a day before you get your account. Um, and so you could get a little bogged down. Although if you've got, uh, if you get your account, then you can move on to step two, which is to do DM visualizations, and then hopefully you'll have access after that. 
Uh, I've already got my account, so I'm going to click on the Earth Explorer link. And I have to log in. And so I'll sign in. Hmm. Don't seem to have my right password. Let's try again. All right. Wonderful. I'm having trouble logging in. So um, give me just a minute. Try a little bit better here. There we go. OK, so remember your password. I'll update it here so I don't have to worry about it. OK, so sorry about that, making the video a little longer. So we're up to 15 minutes already for part one. OK, so what we need to do is find our location. And here you can add coordinates. Um, and so if you wanted to like just highlight these, I think we should be able to copy and uh, add coordinates. So it's, yeah, it's a little bit annoying. So I have to use, nope, I want decimal degrees. And paste. So the first one was latitude. So let me cut this other part. There's my latitude, paste in my longitude, add. OK, so there it is roughly. Oh, I see why I had my latitude off. So actually, the I-70 is over here. So this coordinate's not quite right. I um, guess I was a little freehand on that one. So I-70 coming to the San Rafael swell is over here. So we're going to use that in the end. So basically, what you can do in this program or this download program is you can kind of get over the area of interest that you want. So say it's this area, and we can use the uh, map as your area of interest, right? Uh, which is quite nice. OK, so now what data sets do we want there? Well, first, we also said something about um, search criteria. So it says to change cloud cover to less than 20%. So zero to 20 percent and we'll include unknown cloud cover and then my date range. I want it to be not all but June to start. And then I want to go from. Uh, I guess let's go from five. Sorry, zero five zero one. So we'll give a month buffer. And I'll add May, May and uh, July also. And we'll go from 2022 and go to um, July. So 7 30, 2023. Oops. And then we'll change it. We'll add May and July just in case there's no scenes in June like we want. OK, so let's go then to data sets. So then we can look down through here and we can acquire Landsat data. And I say that we want to pick Landsat and select Landsat C2 US Analysis Ready Data, ARD. So that's the second one here you can see. And so I'll click that and you can see it includes Landsat's uh, missions four through nine. And OK, so then let's click results. And now it searches. 
And um, so if I zoom out a little bit, you can see where I was after. You can see some of them are not perfectly aligned with what I'm after. So that's something for us to worry about. So let's let's we can do the couple of things here. So um, you can show the footprint on the map. So let's do that first. So that one's footprint is over here. That is not so great. So let's turn that off. Let's go to this next one. That one is down there. That's also not so great. Let's go to this next one. Oh, that's awful. Mm -hmm. OK, this one is looking like the footprint I want. But let's see. It looks a little funky in terms of uh, a couple of things. So the date is late July. That's not really what I wanted. OK, so you can see that it's horizontal row eight, vertical row nine. Oh, that's what I said. I should have looked for that to begin with. We could go back to additional criteria probably. And uh, grid horizontal. We can do eight to eight and grid vertical nine to nine. And then we can go to results. And that narrows us in a bit better. So we have July 25th, 17th, 16th. Mm. Oh, here we go. Here's uh, June 30th, so we're into June. So if I, you can, if you click instead of the footprint, but the image, you can see what it looks like. And so there are some clouds. It met the 20% uh, cloud threshold. Um, this is definitely the area we want. Um, but let's look at this other one here. Oops. Oh, this is only the corner there. So let's go next. OK, so here is 2022. Interesting. So if we go previous, they seem to be coming in time. Is that true? Yes. OK, so we go back. The We're going to need to get that six. Oh, what's the order? OK, so here's um, 2023, June 21st. Let's click on that one. That's not where we need. So it's showing what part of that area we need. OK, so that's too late. So let's go back to the first. So the one we want is right here. OK, so I'm going to put that back on the map because it has the San Rafael swell, which is right here. And so this is what I'm after for you guys to think about. Um, there's some rivers and streams that come through this desert terrain, and that's what we're going to look at. You can start to see that it's, there's some greenness. This is 2023. Um, so that's what we want. So let's go ahead and click uh, download options. And I ask you to get both surface reflectance and temperature. And I ask for the bundle download just to save you uh, time. And um, you can see there's other things to get. So there's tile brightness temperature, tile top of the atmosphere, tile surface reflectance, tile surface temperature. And I ask for surface reflectance and temperature. So these are kind of processed to be things on the ground surface. So that's what we want. And so you can, um, I believe, uh, so it's changed a little bit. You can select which specific files you want, or you can download them all as bulk now, or maybe you have to download them individually and then bulk. So we'll check out which of these um, is the case. Um, down below here, oh, there's the bundle download. So let's see. Um, yeah, so let's 
Okay. Add, okay, so these are surface reflectance. We can add all of them to the bulk download. And, oh, I guess we can download it all as a group right up here. So I click download, and it'll go to my downloads, which is okay, and then I can move it. We'll see on this next one, if we can get the temperature ones. Oh yeah, so it's already ready. So just right click, save as, and then I can go back, and I'm in June 2023. Oh, it won't let me do save as, Never mind. Okay, so let's just click download. They don't let you specify too much of the details about the download, unfortunately. Um, okay, so that one's taken a minute. Um, let's open up the files here. So uh, we'll open my downloads in a new window. And so the first one I got, and the other one is started now, is this uh, one here. And you can see these Landsat. They come as a tar file, which is a type of zip file. The other one is now done. You can see that they're pretty big, hundreds of megabytes. So I want both of these. The smaller one is the surface temperature, and you can see the S ST, and then the SR is the surface reflectance. So I'm going to cut those, and I'm going to paste them into June 2023. Okay. And then you can basically right click on them, extract here. And you can see that there's a ton of files in there. So that was surface temperature. And then the surface reflectance, I can do the same. You might want to put these in different folders. Hmm. So I'm going to do that first. New, I'm going to do reflectance. I'm going to move that up there. And I'm going to do another one, which is temperature. And then I'm going to move everything else in the folder into that. So then I go into reflectance, I'll extract here. Okay, there they are. Okay, so now we need to get June. So I can back out of this other one up here. So we're done with, uh, sorry, June 2022. We we're done with 2023. And so I'm going to go to the last page. You can see there's one of four pages. So I think that's where it's going to be. So that's May. Oh, May. Okay, there's our first June. Uh, it's only a partial, so I'll go to the previous. Hopefully that'll take me to three, not one. Yes. I'm going down to the bottom, and we can see here, June 11th, 2022. I can see a preview on the map. It's that same area, has even less clouds. Fairly green, too. Um, so there could be weird effects, right, that, you know, maybe it's greened up faster because the snow melt. Oh was done earlier and the other one maybe it still hasn't warmed up enough but we'll see you know data is data anyways so let's click download options and yep so we'll go down to the bundle get surface temperature click download and then we'll go close that and then we'll go to the surface reflectance and click download as well. As they take a minute to get going. So yeah, anyway, so you'd go through the same process, right? And you'll move those into the folder you want, unzip them, maybe make a new folder for temperature and reflectance and proceed from there. But that's the data that you want to get to complete this lab. Everything else are, that you're going to make are derivatives from those data sets. OK, and so um, the whole reason that we're looking at this area again is because of the contrast in 
in rainfall between these two seasons. We see super dry year in 2022 and a super wet year in 2023. OK, so uh, that's this first part of the video is plenty long enough. OK, so I'll stop it here.